surprised there aren't more stories about cornfields. There was this one. Gillespie Cornfield outside of Perry. Every Halloween go on a long ride with my friends from high school to Gillespie Field. There was a path through the corn wide enough for perhaps a tractor that led to a large circle. Not quite like a crop circle, but it sure gave off that sort of vibe. B-17, Halloween 2010. Lots of marine friends and hunter friends this year. Friends of friends this year. Huge ass fucking party. We eventually had to start pulling the cars out of the circle because it was getting to be too crowded with six cars worth of people. It's getting to be two in the morning. People starting to drift out. About 20 people left in all. Hey on, come get some of this beer. At age 17, you can imagine I was pretty thrilled to be allowed in on the older kids' games and all that. There was the super hot chick, Tina, Trina, I don't remember, who was all over me. Drunk as a fish in a whiskey barrel, but all over me. Too shy to initiate anything, but I did get to see her boobs because she took her top off. Dwindled down to 10 people or so. Me, five hunter friends, three marine friends, and two civilians, not including me. Let's make a fucking bonfire! Ten minutes later, there's a huge fire pit going and we're dancing around it, pretending to be Native Americans doing a ritual, laughing, and having a good ass time. MBD, right? Hush washes over everyone. We all got the same rush of sudden unease and anxiety. Everybody freezes, more or less in the positions we've been dancing in. Goofy as shit, but nobody dares to make a sound. Only sounds are the sounds of the giant fire in the pit. Standing around for almost a minute before someone whispers, What happened to all the crickets and shit? No wind, no crickets, no birds, no nothing. So we stop dancing thoroughly put off. And my buddy Joseph, a hunter, goes, Guys, I'm gonna go get my rifle. Murmur of agreement. The other hunters break off of Joseph and grab their shit, mostly pistols and knives besides Joe. Marine buddies, Kate, Samuel, and Ed, sit down in what I could roughly describe as a perimeter sort of thing around me and the other no-training folks. At this point, we're too nervous and anxious to talk. We're barely breathing. There's not a noise, just the fire pits crackling and slight rustle in the corn, and it's starting to get a little disconcerting. We sort of stuck close together and kept wide, worried eyes on the stalks. Kate says, Something's not right. Mutual agreement, but nobody can put a finger on it. Ed sucks in a breath, and everybody jumps a bit and looks over at him. If the wind is gone, what the fuck is making the corn stalks rustle? Swear to God, I nearly pissed myself right the fuck there. We're all about five seconds and a sneeze away from needing a change of clothes when Joe comes back, white as a sheet, alone. Joe's pulling the bolt back on his rifle and sprinting back to the campfire circle. Tosses his pistol to Ed. Joe, what the fuck happened? You look like you saw Sam's mom. Joe sort of glares at Ed and then hisses. Don't you fucking joke right now. There's something in the corn. You won't, mate. There's something in the corn. I'm not fucking around. Now see, around here we're used to big dogs, large crows, even the occasional oversized cat. So everybody sort of gave Joe this slanty eye, the fuck are you saying sort of look like he's trying to freak everybody out more. We keep trying to get him to tell us where the others are, what happened to the other four he went off with. Says they stayed at the cars to protect them. Rustling in the corn, Joe immediately wheels and takes a shot. Right next to my fucking ear, Joe, you cocksucker. Immediately, feelings of fear and anxiety intensify. Some sort of low whimpering noise is coming out of the corn now. Joe is gibbering like a fucking drunk, muttering incoherently. I'm about to take the rifle from him when I notice he's got some sort of black slime smeared on his pant leg. Then I nearly shit myself again. Because what crawled out of the corn was not a dog, not in the strictest sense I guess. He was shambling, sort of awkwardly, with what looked like a broken leg, maybe a dislocated shoulder. 
It looked like it had, at some point in time, been some sort of hound dog, a black or dark brown bloodhound. There was chicken wire wound around its neck like a noose, and it was coated in flies. There was a black sludge dripping from its jaws and oozing out a bullet hole near its right eye, which was itself drooling that same black crap-like tears. Joe lost his fucking mind at this point. <laughs> Sam and I had to wrestle the rifle away from him. No more green text. It's hard for me to keep up. This shit still gives me the shakes. It kept shambling out of the corn towards us, wheezing and spitting that black shit onto the ground. The flies numerous enough that I could almost hear them buzzing from across the clearing. <laughs> Joe was fucking losing his mind, collapsed on the ground and was trying to go fetal as me and my marine friends tried to haul him away. The dog just kept walking, and as it kept coming it dragged something else out of the corn behind it, attached to the chicken wire wound around its neck. It, it took a second for me to piece it together in the light of the fire, but attached to the end of this morbid fucking umbilical cord was a beating heart like a bear-sized, still bleeding, leaking heart, thumping away and leaking that black sludge shit. The flies were having a field day with it. The dog had no eyes for us. It was staring directly at the fire, like it was mesmerized or something. It dragged itself off kilter towards the fire, wheezing and spitting and sobbing, the heart beating excitedly on the chicken wire behind it. Its back legs were mangled and it sort of dragged itself along on its front legs and one back leg. Now the fucking weird thing is, as it got closer to us, I swear to god I thought I could hear some sort of words every time the dog wheezed and whimpered and cried. I didn't stick around to listen. Nobody else did either. We grabbed Joe and fucking beat feet back to where the path to the cars was, making a wide berth around the dog and its cargo. Before I left, I had to watch. I'm pretty sure the others had the same feeling as they weren't very far ahead of me when the show was over. I stopped and watched as it dragged itself, heaving and coughing, closer to the fire. The flies didn't even veer away when it stuck its head in the fire. It burned like someone had tossed a tire in there. It stunk something fucking fierce. I just had to watch, because the dog didn't stop moving when it had been engulfed by the pit. The chicken wire kept moving, dragging the heart into the flames after the dog until they were both gone. And the only way anybody could have known it was there was the trail of black sludge on the ground and the smell of burning rubber. We were halfway home and I finally looked over at Joe. There was something that had been bothering me since the thing had gotten close enough for me to really hear it. I asked Joe what it had said to him because I was almost positive that was why he'd been so fucking freaked out. It'd been next to him in the corn, and we'd heard it speaking to him. At first I thought maybe I was wrong, because it gave me this weirded out glare and he wouldn't say anything. Then he took a deep breath, and he leaned over to me, and he whispered this sentence in my ear. Come with me. I'll bring you home. And for a second I felt very cold, because that was what I had heard too. What I think I saw that night was Beelzebub. I'm not a noob, so I know that Beelzebub is not the devil. Not in the actual rhetoric. He's the lord of the flies. I don't know why he appeared to us that night, what he wanted or what brought him there. I don't even know if what we saw was really a demon. Maybe it was just something in the corn. There's lots of stuff in the corn nobody really wants to talk about. At any rate, I moved out of Iowa, so I don't have to worry about the corn or what I saw. I should probably try to reconnect with my friends, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'll find out that Joe died in a fire or slit his own wrists. Sometimes I have nightmares about it. And I think maybe Joe does too, which is why I'm afraid that I'll find he lit himself on fire. I keep a matchbook under my pillow because sometimes I kind of want to do it just to see what it'd be like.